All right, so OpenAI just released O3 Mini, the smartest, the best model that we have ever seen, according to all the benchmarks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use it, which <laughs> we're just gonna do right here. If you're in a paid plan, you simply go into here and you can switch to O3 Mini. But as you can see, this is not exactly intuitive. Matter of fact, I would argue it's quite the opposite. You have O1, you have O1 Pro, you have O3 Mini, you have O3 Mini High, then you have DeepSeek, which essentially does the same thing what should you be using and what decisions do you make here depending on your budget? So in this video, I wanna answer two questions. Well, kind of three questions. The first one, which one should you be using if you're on a free plan, if you're not willing to spend a single dollar? What is the smartest AI model that you could be using today? Second question, what should you be using if you're on an unlimited budget and you just don't care what you spend? Give me the best model in the world, I want that. And then thirdly, what do you spend or like which model do you pick if you're on a $20 budget and you're on a plus plan or similar? We're gonna answer all of these and we're gonna do it based on benchmarks. This video is not gonna be about running some random test cases or doing one-off prompts uh, or something like that. We do that in separate content. Here, we're simply gonna look at all the benchmarks that came with the release because the focus of these thinking models, as you might know, is really more um, science-driven, more mathematical and coding-focused use cases. So those are really hard to judge one by one. We're gonna rely upon the benchmarks here. Vibes are a different story, okay? So data-driven recommendations on what to use, what is the best model in the world today for you to use, let's go. All right. Very simple, um, I prepared an overview for you, okay? With pen and paper here, I compiled all the benchmarks. I'm gonna show them to you in about 15 seconds. I just wanna spend 10 seconds complaining by how messy this release is. If you try to look into this yourself, it's a mess. Like, seriously, not just the naming. I'm not just talking about the fact that we have O1, O3 Mini, whatever, O3 Mini High. Um, sure, like, I'll, I'll cut them some slack for that because, you know, like, DeepSeek only has one model and they named it R1, so that's simpler. But the benchmarks that they released here, Jesus. Like the ChatGPT Pro blog post doesn't even include all the benchmarks that are um, included with the O3 mini blog post. So, so that's kind of messy. But then also these code forces benchmarks, they're just, here they're expressed in ELO values and here they're expressed in percentiles in the world. So then I had to go in and I had to like look up what each ELO means in terms of percentile, and I had to translate them so we could compare apples to oranges. Uh, apples to apples, because this is apples to oranges. Long story short, here is everything that I came up with for you in one sheet, and let me make my recommendations based on this. Before I do this, quick explanation of what you can see over here on the screen. Uh, basically, you can see all the models that, that matter the most right now. You can see O1, ChatGPT's old reasoning model, then you can see O1 Pro, the one that is only available to the $200 Pro plan. Then you see O3 Mini on the low setting, the one that they just released. Then you have O3 Mini Medium. By the way, low, medium, and high refers to how much reasoning the model is doing, okay? So if it spends more time reasoning, more time thinking about something, it just performs better across all the benchmarks and does better, but as you can see, it also takes more time. Matter of fact, I couldn't even test O3 Mini Low in ChatGPT because it's not available. It's That's that's an API thing. In O3 Mini Low, their blog post says uh, it's not available. What you get on the free plan is O3 Mini Medium, okay? So we have O3 Mini Medium, then we have O3 Mini High, and then we have DeepSeek R1, which you know, the, all, the entire world is talking about now and a lot of people are using. And we're comparing all of the benchmarks that have been published here to each other. In yellow, with this wonderful Sharpie marker that I got from California last year, I circled the, the highest values on here, okay? So as you can see, O3 mini high across the board, really amazing, okay? That's, that's the one we wanna be looking at. And at the bottom, this speed number, this is a purely subjective benchmark that I created here over the past hour, okay? So take it with like, not just a grain of salt, but a truckload of salt, but I think it's worth something. I basically went ahead and I ran uh, the same prompt here through O1 Pro three times, through O3 Mini uh, three times, all of these three times, and I averaged it out, and these are the results I got in seconds, okay? So as you can see, the old O1 was the fastest, and O1 Pro, as expected, is by far the slowest here.
Okay, so those are the results. Now let's get to the recommendations based on these results, based on the data. What should you be using if you have an unlimited budget, if you don't care what you spend, you just want the best model out there? Well, you would probably be on a 01, uh, on a ChatGPT Pro plan, but there's no real point in doing that anymore because as you can see, O3 Mini on the high setting actually outperforms ChatGPT Pro on these benchmarks. Now, there's one caveat to this, which I do want to highlight, and that's the fact that the blog post that was published with ChatGPT Pro, these numbers on, on, for example, like O1, they don't line up with the new O3 blog post. That's why I'm saying this one, this is a little confusing, and the O1 Pro evaluation, I'll caveat this, because look at that, competition math, 78 for O1, and then if I go to the O3 Mini, um, competition math, same benchmark, right? All of a sudden, O1 has 83. Again, uh, over here it was 78, and now it's 83. I, I don't know what's up with that, but basically I took these numbers for O1 Pro. These are the only benchmarks I could find on the internet and from OpenAI. And if I compare them, O3 Mini on the high setting just wins across the board. So there's no real point to pay for the $200 plan if the only thing you care about is the smartest model out there. There's a lot of other points. Uh, you know, no rate limits, for example, because O3 Mini Pro is rate limited. I'll put it in the top uh, comment in the description. This they keep changing this. Um, I pu I'll put it. I'll pin it in the top comment. That's what I'm trying to say. And the other models um, uh, underperform it. So as you ca as you can see, no point for the $200 plan. If you want operator, if you want no rate limits, if you want unlimited advanced voice mode, unlimited Sora, all these wonderful things that may be well worth it. I think especially operator is for many people, for the smartest model, you don't need it, okay? So then let's move on over to the second question of this video. Which model should you be using if you want to spend $20 on a premium plan or if you are spending $20 on a premium plan? Well, as you can see, O3 Mini on the high setting has the highest performance. So that's the one you want to be using. You get better benchmarking results across the board then uh, DeepSeek R1, and you get a better speed, right? But this is in seconds, so, so lower is better. So, so over here, uh, you can see in this row, <laughs> I like this, um, it, 60 seconds is faster than 95 seconds, so that's better. And then all the values are higher than the DeepSeek R1 value. So that's the point of this release, right? Like, stop using DeepSeek. We have a better model now. That's what OpenAI did here. Okay, so that's a recommendation for the paid users. Now, what about the free users? Because this is the most important one, I think, because it's going to be affecting the largest amount of people worldwide. What if you're not willing to spend any money on an AI assistant and you just want the best model out there? Well, I think, and according to these numbers, um, I would say, that's also the, why OpenAI released it, that you should be using O3 Mini in the free plan, as everybody has that in the free plan now, they released it to the public. They would have probably never done this if DeepSeek didn't happen last week. But O3 Mini is on the medium setting. And as you can see, on the medium setting, we're comparing um, 80 to 80, right? On math, science, 77 to 72. O3 Mini medium wins. Code, 96 to 96. It's a tie. And on Software Engineering Bench, actually, that's the one where DeepSeek R1 performs better. So, you know, if you care about that one specific benchmark, then you should be using DeepSeek R1. But the time, it took only 32 seconds for it to generate the result. On average, DeepSeek took an average of 95 seconds, three times as much. And due to that, um, it's, it's, you know, superior, superior performance on most benchmarks and a way, way better time. O3 Mini on the free ChatGPT plan is what you want to be using moving forward if you want the best and smartest AI, plus ChatGPT has obviously more tooling, uh, custom instructions and that, the file attachments and stuff like that. So it's just a superior product in, in that sense too. Um, and if you want the smartest model, O3 Mini on the medium setting or in the interface, um, this one right here, O3 Mini, is the best model you could be using today. So basically ChatGPT took back the crown and that's what happened here. So I, I hope this helped. I have one final point. And the final point is many people keep asking Igor, like, okay, we have these new reasoning models. Like, they seem really potent. They are really potent. I'm using them. Amazing. What do I use them for, though? Does this open up some new use cases? Because at the end of the day, like, I try to make this focus, a channel focused on all the AI tools for consumers and how you can make your life better with them. And there is specific things that these models do better than the previous generation of AI models, as many people say these days. 
you know, the GPT 4.0s and the, the Sonnets 3.5s and, and then the Llamas, etc. What they do really well is they, they're good at planning. They're good at bigger picture thinking. We're not going to talk about that in this video, but I'm going to refer you to two resources that I already created. Matter of fact, one is an interactive and open and fully free community challenge that we're running right now that I want to briefly show you. I think this is like one of the most amazing things we do here at the AI Advantage. In the public area of our community, we basically uh, have this space right here so you can freely access this. If you just, um, you don't even need an account. You can just look at this entire area. Look, I'll just close all of this. And down here you have the public challenge. And the public challenge basically asks, asked people all of January, viewers of this channel, like what is your best use case for O1 or now O3 or DeepSeek? Doesn't matter. And then multiple community members shared their best use case here. There's some really amazing ones. Look at that, like um, splitting bills and having a financial advisor or turning uh, O1 or DeepSeek into your personalized science research lab. We looked at this one in the last video, it's really amazing, with downloadable files to run this all and a discussion underneath of people or using it or revolutionizing HR with these new models. All of these different ap approaches and more for you to view and I'll be doing a public challenge on February the 3rd, uh, a public stream, I wanted to say. And on February the 3rd, we're going to be looking at all of the results here and we're going to be talking more in depth about the use cases. Plus, there is one more video on the channel where I went a little more um, in depth on O1. Um, I'll just pull this up right here. Um, I believe it's this it's this one. I'll link it in the description below. There's a video here that is all about um, that is all about using or free. Okay, I'll just use it. Uh, I'll just link it below. So there you go. Use cases from the community. Separate video where I share all my thoughts. It's really good at translating, rewriting, and business activities that require more planning. Those are basically the free free big use cases for me. If you're a paid user, use O3 Mini High. If you're a free user, use ChatGPT O3 Mini. And that's going to give you the best model in the world. All right. I hope this was helpful. Bit of a confusing release. And I hope this brought you some clarity. Enjoy.